This video is one in a series of videos covering how to make a car body for automation, the car company tycoon game, from start to finish. In this video, I'll discuss UV unwrapping. This is a critical step in the modeling process, and it's important that this step be done here and now, before we do the seams, and before we do any shape keys. We do this step before the seams, so when we do finally pull seams, they will line up perfectly with the UV mesh, and I'll explain that a bit more when we get to the seams. It's also important to do shape keys last, after seams and after the UVs, since you can't apply modifiers to a mesh with shape keys, and you don't want to be messing up the vertex order when you go do shape keys. So let's get started. Before we begin, we will apply the mirror modifier on all our variants as well as any shrink wrap, bevel, or any other modifiers you have open except for the armature modifier. You will not apply the armature modifier at any time during this process. If you have two monitors, it's easier to use them for this process. You can open up an extra window, move it to the other monitor, and split the screen that way. If not, you can do as I do here, and click on the UV Editing tab and use the split window. I'll hover the mouse over the car body and press L to select the mesh. It is important that we do not select the underbody yet, and that the underbody is a separate element. If your underbody is joined to the car, the UV unwrap will not work correctly. You will have overlapping UVs which will cause projection tearing in-game. So with the body selected, I'll press U to bring up the unwrap menu, then you can select Unwrap or just press U again and the mesh will be unwrapped using a pelt unwrapping method. If this is your first unwrap, your 2D cursor will be in the lower left corner of the UV space. We want it centered, so under the View tab, with a 2D cursor window expanded, set the cursor location to 0.5 on both the X and Y axis. Now with the UV unwrapped and the 2D cursor centered, I'll just select the center edge of the UV by pressing Alt and mouse clicking on the center edge loop. Now I'll press R to rotate it, and I'll line it up horizontally. Next press the period key, and make sure that the pivot point is set to the 2D cursor. Now I want to make sure the center line is perfectly flat and lined up with the center of the UV space, so I'll press S, Y, 0, then enter, to scale the center line flat along the Y axis in the UV space. Now I will right click in the UV Editor window and select Snap, then Selected to Cursor Offset. For now, to make sure it's fully in the UV space, I'll scale the center line in just a touch, and then I'll press P to pin the vertices to the middle. Now I can press U to reopen the UV Unwrapping window, and I'll select Unwrap, which is the U hotkey again and now the UV is perfectly lined up along the center line of the mesh, facing the direction we need it to. I'm going to spot check the UV, looking at where various UV vertex coordinates are, and make sure they're actually mirrored perfectly. If they're not, you'll need to go back and do the steps again, but a perfectly symmetrical mesh, unwrapped in this way, should yield a perfectly symmetrical UV. Now, to help us make sure the UV doesn't extend outside of the UV space, we can tick the Constrain to Image Balance box under the UV drop-down menu. Then I'll take my whole UV and scale it up until it's taking up most of the UV space. Now I'll work the UV a little bit to stretch it out further. A side note, this is generally not how you would do UVs for a typical game object, but since the game materials are procedural and projected, whether or not the UVs are stretched doesn't have much impact on how the materials look. What does matter is the UV mesh projection that cuts holes in the body for fixture placement. In that case, the more UV space you can use, the higher resolution the UV mesh cutouts will be, and the less tearing you'll experience when placing fixtures. The next thing I can do to take up more of the UV space is to select the edge that makes up the bottom front transparent lip. I can enable proportional editing and set it to sharp. Now I can scale my selection, constrain it to the Y axis by pressing Y, and then using the mouse wheel I can make the proportional brush larger or smaller, and I can scale the front of the car to take up more UV space. 
It is critical that you pay attention to how your seams are being stretched at this point. Ensure that they don't stretch out and become fat, and also sh make sure they don't overlap themselves or anything else in the UV. I'll repeat this step for the back. Now we can start on the underbodies. We do need to UV unwrap these, but I do them last so I can line them up with the lip placement material area of the UV so they'll be cut away by fixture placement in game. So we can select the underbodies by hovering the mouse over them, pressing L, and then U and U again to unwrap them. You'll have to turn off constraint to image bounce so we can move the underbodies off to the side. Now let's figure out what's what. I'll select the first one, and I can see that it's the underbody for the rear of the car. So I'll move this underbody to the other side of the UV space. Now I'll test to see if it's aligned correctly. Make sure you have UV sync selection mode activated, and box select across the car and the underbody. In the editor window, we can see the opposite side of the underbody has been selected. This means I have the UV oriented incorrectly. I need to rotate it 180 degrees, so I'll do that by pressing R, typing in 180, and pressing Enter. Alternatively, you could press R and hold down Control to do a snap rotate with your mouse. Now if you select the same UV sections, you can see that the appropriate portions of the mesh are selected, so now the UV is aligned. I will repeat this general process for the remaining three underbodies. Okay, now that we have the underbodies positioned relative to where they belong on the car, it's time to snap them into place. So I'll start by flattening them. This is easiest if you use bounding box as your pivot point. For the front and rear underbodies, flattening them is as simple as pressing S, X, 0, Enter. For the side underbodies, it's S, Y, 0, Enter. I'll scale down and move them closer to the UV unwrap. Now I'll enable snapping, select vertex, and ensure closest is selected. Now I can box select and snap the collapsed UV underbodies to the UV mesh where the top of the lip placement material meets the bottom of the visible body. When I get near the edge, I will have to use the weld function to unify stray UV points. As you get near the edge, it's not too critical that everything line up perfectly because it won't. Just snap the next vertex available point and move on. It will work just fine in the game. We will do this and work our way around the entire UV. The last step is to simply create a second UV map in the Object Data tab of the Properties panel. You may have to expand the UV Maps window. Repeat this process for each car body variant that you have. This will conclude this video. If you found it useful, give the video a like and hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this one as they're released. See you next time!